How's it going everybody? It is Dennis and we're back with another video and it is dad time of the month. It is August 1st, July has ended and it's time to talk about the income we have earned from dividends, from options on our account, on our Robinhood portfolio. Let's see how much we have made. Of course, as always, I love being transparent as possible. I have my spreadsheet open. We're going to go look through every single dividend I have earned, every single options uh, income I have earned from all the different funds I trade in the stocks I trade. We're going to look at the totals for each, each individual one and for the total amount for July. Just to let you guys know, July is another record breaking amount earned from in general from all my earnings for every single month. This is the record breaking amount. So we're going to see how I did it, what I did and where I earned it. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Looking into July, we have it marked it as green. As always, we earned four dollars and two cents from Stag. Of course, like I say all the time, these are just funds I've held for a long, a long time. Uh, and I just keep holding them because they're safe. They keep paying me dividends. They might be not the highest dividends. My income might be better or my money might be better somewhere else. But in general, I just hold them because why not? They've been around. They're in the plus. They're in the green. So might as well hold them. Uh, next up, we have Maine, which paid us five dollars and thirty two cents. And then, of course, we have the yield max ETFs. These are the highest paying when it comes to dividends. And we're going to get into them right now. So Apple, fifty eight dollars and 74 cents lower than june higher than may why is it lower than june well because their dividends that they paid out per share were lower than june why is it higher than may though well because we added shares we added a bunch of shares into apple and even because we did add, add shares it didn't really do much when it comes to how much we earned because dividends per share were still lower than expected but still 50 dollars and 74 cents is not too shabby Looking at TSOY, TSOY, as many of you might know, in July delivered a dollar per share dividend and we earned $355.45 because, of course, at the time we owned 355 shares. So $355.45, as you can see, we are beating most of the months we have earned. And the last time we got such a high dividend was back in January or December. And that, of course, was before we had the split or the reverse split. Uh, so $355.45 is nice to see and we are growing. We are doing well. It is said that apparently in August we're going to get another dollar dividend or maybe even higher. So the Tesla and the Tesla team are doing quite well. So it's quite great to see that and I hope they keep delivering high dividends per share on Tesla. Uh, with AMZ, we got $162.95. As many of you guys know, AMZ has been performing quite poor recently uh, as has the whole market honestly. Uh, actually, today of recording this video, August 1st, uh, the market is trending, uh, trending downwards quite significantly, and most of my account is down uh, by a good percentage. Uh, but that is okay because I actually did want it to go down a little bit. Uh, the Russell 2000 has skyrocketed, and my contracts are having a little bit of an issue keeping up with such a skyrocket when it comes to the top side. Uh, so it's quite nice to have it come down and chill out a little bit, even though if it does look like a negative on my portfolio, but it's, that's, it's fine. That's how the market is up and down left and right. We continue to trade and make our income. So $162 and 95 cents lower than the previous two months, but higher than the third month of April. So we are still trending upwards. Of course, not as strong as of May and June. And of course we added more shares because we have diversified portfolio quite a bit since June. Uh, so we're under the 10% portfolio diversity. We're going to start reinvesting back into AMZ. And also we are below our average cost because like I said, underlying Amazon and the general market is down recently. Uh, Kony, we have not been receiving dividends. We've sold out of the position. For GUI, we're at $62.51 earned. Lower than June, but higher than the rest of the month. And of course, that is because we have added shares. So that is a little bit of a bias, uh, but the dividends per share was lower than June. So June was quite a good month for yield max ETFs, uh, at least when it came to AMZ GUI. Uh, and then at Tesla did perform quite well for the month of July. Looking at YMAX. So YMAX, the dividends per share actually states the same or probably a little bit lower, I think it was. Uh, but we still earned $132.31. That is because we have been aggressive into adding more shares into YMAX. Because I do believe it is quite a safe fund or safer fund uh, than the other ones, than the single uh, stock ETFs. 
and that is because it is diversified into multiple ETFs. And if you guys have not seen the previous video, they'll be up in the top right corner. Uh, I talk about you know how your max ETF is over diversified in my opinion, and some things should be taken out of it. Uh, so if you guys want to watch that, you guys can watch that after this video. But yeah, YMAX diversified, maybe a little bit too over diversified, especially into some sections. But in general, provides good dividends, good returns, and stays quite stable compared to the single stock ETFs. Uh, HTGC is uh, quarterly, didn't pay anything. SPHD we sold out of. Uh, with EFC, we earned $12.06. With DHS, we earned $8.81. Not quite sure what happened here, why their dividend per share dropped so hard, but it did. Uh, but we still are earning and are still growing on EFC. We're at $12.06 compared to $11.67, $11.80, and $11.93. Now, we have SCHH that earned us $6.64, another quarterly paying dividend ETF. RITM is another quarterly paying dividend ETF that earned us $55.44 and also has been increasing steadily. TSLL earned us $49.53. They also paid dividends quarterly. But now we are out of TSLL. We are no longer going to be trading TSLL. You will not be seeing it on my income earned because we have sold out of TSLL in total. I, I deem that Tesla is too volatile for my liking. Therefore, I decided to sell out of it. Uh, and maybe in the future, when it calms down a little bit, we'll go back into it. Of course, if it calms down, then premiums are low. But TSLY is enough exposure for me when it comes into Tesla. And lastly, the dividend we have added into our dividend fund and overall portfolio is QDTE, the weekly paying QQQ dividend ETF. And that earned us $83.62. How did we earn so much in such a short period of time? Well, we did put a lot of funds into QDTE. We actually funded a bunch of money into it. We funneled a bunch of money into it. That is because, you know, we sold TSLL. We got out of the TSL position and we funded all those funds into QDTE to pump it out as much as we can. Of course, we did dollar cost average the best we could when it was in its lows, but it still earned us $83.62 which is not too bad compared to TSO, uh, compared to Apple, GUI. Uh, so it's doing pretty well for the amount of portfolio it takes up. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like roughly 6%, 7% of my portfolio, similar to GUI and Apple, and it still performs quite well, quite, quite, quite well. And actually this week they have a 50 cent dividend payout, which is absolutely insane per share. Uh, I think that brings it to the maybe even the high 70% uh, distribution rate. So it's performing quite well. QQQ is down, but in general, it, it performs quite well. It follows the QQQ quite well. So I am quite, I'm liking the fund. I'm liking the fund. I'm liking Round Hill and their strategy. And I think the daily, the zero DTE strategy works quite well. And I'm not going to go into this video why, but I'm going to make a separate video for that. But it just works very well. And there's going to be a separate video to explain why it works so well. But anyways, $83.62 is quite nice. Uh, we also have a different sheet that follows my weekly payments. And that one is also going to be interesting to look at to see the growth and if there is growth. Uh, so yeah, $83.62. So now that since that is all my funds, we've been over all my funds that I have, all the dividends I've earned. How much has that earned me in dividends alone, in dividends alone for July? Well, it has earned me $997.40. We're just $3 short of being at a $1,000 mark with dividends alone. $3 short, uh, but we are $997. We are higher than the previous three months, of course, 576, 745, 735. But of course, we funded a lot more funds into the dividend side of my portfolio because we have sold TSLL and we have put it into more of these funds like Apple, GUI, AMZ, Tesla, blah, blah, blah. Tesla performed quite well once again. Uh, and QDTE as well. Also, we received a bunch of quarterly paying dividends this time around as well. So $997, almost at the $1,000 mark. So it's going very, very well. But where it gets very interesting and where this month performs so well is on the option side. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And yes, you're seeing this correct. We're a negative $102 on Riot. Why am I down negative $102 or why did I lose $102 on Riot? Well, that is because I closed my put positions. I have decided 
in July to close my put positions because I no longer want to hold so much portfolio or so much of my cash in Riot. I bought back my puts. I lost a little bit on them uh, when it comes to like the short time frame. On the short time frame, I had to pay money to get them back. On the long time frame, I have earned a quite decent amount on Riot. Uh, so it was worth having that money running on Riot. But in general, I decided the best thing case scenario is to close it, get my cash back and use it on TNA, which allowed me to deliver the, the dividends, the income, the options I earned for this month was just because I closed Riot, I closed my TSLL position and I put my money elsewhere. Diversified it, I guess. Spread it around. Uh, so negative $102 on Riot. I still hold the 900 shares on Riot, so I still have that. That's still going to be earning me income. Maybe not the highest I could, but it's still going to be there uh, until, of course, I sell out of it. Uh, Mara, of course, hasn't been around for a while. TSLL, like I said, I sold out of. But before I sold out of it, I did earn $171 from options. Uh, and, of course, then I sold out finally, got rid of it. Uh, and TNA, yes, you're seeing that right. $1,500. And $35 earned from TNA. We are up significantly from the previous months. And the way I did it is the reason I explained in my previous videos is I'm running a poor man covered call strategy on TNA. What is a poor man covered call strategy? Well, you buy a bottom call and then you sell the top call to earn weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly income using that call on the bottom. I have currently two types of calls. I have, well, not two types of call. I have two different valued calls. I have a $30 call expiring this 2025. And then I have another $34 call expiring in 2026. And of course I have, I think six of the 30 and two of the 34. Uh, so eight calls in general, and they're earning me 1535 or $1,535 a month. Currently, of course, it depends on volatility. This month is going to be a little bit more calm. And we're also earning on the bottom side because if we get called away on the top side, we sell off the bottom. The bottom earns us income as well as we sell off to pay for the top side. So it all works out nice and dandy. The only time, of course, it doesn't work out is when the market drops and drops hard. Then, of course, your calls on the bottom will hurt. But if you play it right, if you hold like I hold yearly calls, and two year away calls, then you'll be fine. Round Hill or not Round Hill, but Russell 2000 will probably recover in that time frame enough for you to be break even on your calls or at least earn enough income on your top side to where it, you know, takes away the pain from the bottom side. But $1,535 is what we have earned from TNA. Uh, I guess you could say it's similar to the strategy that a lot of these ETF uh, high dividend ETFs run. Uh, they run synthetic covered call strategies, which is where they buy a call and sell a put. And I'm not still quite sure why they do it. I understand that the risk towards the downside is a little bit less because, you know, the put kind of softens the downside. If you just have the call like I do, then you take all that negative and you lose all your amount. And it looks really bad uh, in the short term. But if you're confident that the ETF or the stock that you have is going to go up in the long term, buy a long-term call don't go for the put because then you have to put that up as collateral unless they don't put it up as collateral i'm not quite sure how exactly their trading system works maybe they have some kind of bank that covers their underside and their margin and they're able to provide this high yield once again not quite sure how the inside of their companies work but for a regular tra trader if you're trying to do synthetic calls uh you have to put up money on the put when you're selling the put and then you have to buy the call which is an additional amount and when I did the math on TNA, it comes out to be more than the share price. So for me, it's just not worth it. For me, the poor man cover call is better. For that same amount of money, I can have three calls, three times my money on the weekly basis, and therefore three times my return. So $1,535 is how much I've earned from TNA. And if we look at the total option income, it is $1,604. And you guys could probably do the math on your own at this point. $1,604 and $997 together comes out to a total of $2,601 earned for the month of July, beating all my previous records of $2,403, uh, $1,700. It beat $1,900, of course. 
It beat all my previous records of how much I've earned on a monthly basis. And I didn't have to take some extreme trade like I took previously when I earned 2,400. As you guys know, I took a crazy trade on TSLL and got assigned. Uh, was not worth it. Don't have to do that anymore because now I'm trading safely or safer than I was previously. I've learned my lessons. I've taken my chances. I've learned what's best for me. And for so far, it's been performing well. We're going to see how it does this month of August. We're going to see how it does in August. So far, it has been doing quite well. Uh, we have, Like I said, the market has dropped. So my calls are doing great. Uh, they're way out of the money. Uh, so they're relaxed. They're chilling. They're earning income. Uh, we still have two more trades to do for August. Uh, you guys might be asking, how do I have two trades left? Well, I do trades in advance when I see a great opportunity to take some cash in. Uh, so we've been doing doing that. We've been doing quite well, uh, and actually we've been higher than the thirty dollar average that I've expected from each contract. We've roughly been at fifty dollars or sixty dollars at some point per contract. So doing quite well, performing quite well, uh, and we're gonna see how it goes. But two thousand six hundred one dollars is great. Of course, most of this money gets reinvested, uh, so don't expect this just to be hard cold cash. Uh, most of this money and pretty much all of this money gets reinvested back into the fund to earn more the next month and the next month and the next month. Uh, and of course, you guys might be asking, what's the point of it calling it income? Well, if I do want to take it out, I'll take it out on margin. And therefore, it doesn't even count. Uh, I get a tax deductible at the end because the percentage of interest is tax deductible. If you file that way, whatever, that's a lot of tax stuff. But yeah, if I really need income, I take it out as margin against my account. And I continue to grow my portfolio. But yeah, $1,604 on options. We beat all the previous options that we've had before. Actually, we didn't beat that time where we took that crazy trade on TSLL. But anyways, it's safer. We've been beating all our previous months. We're growing, we're growing, and we're growing. As we're growing, we're learning. And hopefully you guys are learning with me as you guys watch me take these trades and learn how to trade the better and better and better. Uh, but in general... I think August might not be at 2,600. If it is, that'll be great. That'll be awesome if it is at 2,600 or higher. Uh, but I expect it to be a little bit lower uh, because, of course, volatility market is down. Uh, maybe that'll help some of these ETFs. Uh, but and we might get higher dividends. Not quite sure. Uh, but I think it might be a little bit lower than 2,600 on the option side and a dividend side. Well, in general, if it is higher, that'll be great. And if you guys, of course, stick around for next month and for the next month and for the next month, you guys will see how we perform, how we grow. Are these dividend funds working? Are these option strategies working? Or is it just all a scam to where it doesn't do much for your account? But I would like to say that my account is up quite well. And of course, I do a yearly checkup on my account. So you guys have to stick to the end of the year to see how much I've earned uh, actually on my portfolio, how much my portfolio has grown. But right now, it sits at roughly... 40 to 50 percent growth depending on the day today it's at 40 because the market went down but just last week it was at 50 percent growth in general on the one year scale for my portfolio so we're performing quite well and i can't wait to see where this strategy goes for options for tna can't wait where to see where the dividends are next month or for this month of august see how tsly performs all these other funds how qdte performs we've added more shares than all these etfs so we're expected to have higher dividends unless dividends per share fall. But in general, it should be higher dividends. So we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm going to be talking about QDTE, why it's so overpowered, why it's better than weekly paying uh, weekly ETFs that have weekly calls, uh, and why daily zero DTE options is better for these types of funds. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, thank you for letting us hit a thousand subs. Continue subscribing, continue liking. It helps people see the videos and actually learn something, maybe uh, learn about these funds, learn about these strategies, know about the risks before investing them. Maybe some people don't want to take the risks that we take or I take. So just like subscribe. Let's spread this video out so more people can learn about these funds more people could get involved. Uh, and thank you so much, everybody, for watching. That was my income for July. And we hit another record. See you guys in the next video.